interesting thing about this, we're going to do the top 10 of 1985. This is the coolest thing. This is like a reunion of two guys who haven't talked to each other or see each other since how long, Thor? Well, since 1984, I, I had the pleasure interesting of meeting Chris about- Holmes at the after party uh, after we did the concert, the Lyceum. It was uh, Thor Wasp and uh, uh, Rathchild. Okay. And... Uh, it was an amazing night. It was sold out. It was fantastic, and uh, I, I, it was it was a great pleasure for me to meet the guys in Wasp. Do, do you remember? They, so, so Chris, they, they they filmed this show, right? This is a Wasp show that was filmed on the first album, right? Do you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, live at the Lyceum. Live at the Lyceum. Yeah. Alan. Should we crank things up and get things yeah, started? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, of course, we were inundated with millions and millions of uh, <laughs> emails saying, when are you going to do 1985? We just finished 1984. We uh, had to expand that list. And uh, here in 1985, one thing I noticed, a lot of sophomore albums, you know, made the list. So uh, it'll be interesting to check out. But just to get, get everybody in memory lane, Back to the Future, Rambo First Blood Part Two, Rocky four i guess the color purple the goonies and spies like us you guys remember those movies that was 1985 okay <laughs> I, I i remember the 80, 80s yeah the 80s i remember yeah, Ron, yeah. you can get them Ronald. on video or dvd today i remember yeah. i remember them like it was yesterday <laughs> <laughs> all right there it was we go. a great time it was a great time beautiful time when metal was metal ruled and so yeah that's right Yep, yep. And here we go. You guys ready for this is number 10. And this is where I brought Thor on to go down memory lane. Only the Strong, released in 1985, considered to be one of the, I guess, classic, most or classic albums of Thor. Uh, Thor, maybe you want to just tell us a little bit about this album and what it means to people today. I have, I've gotten... Uh so many accolades uh, about uh, and, and correspondence uh, with regards to that album, Only the Strong, that I uh, am sometimes embarrassed. Uh, my face turns red when people say that they recovered, but I'm also in gratitude and, and deeply honored that people would say that, that Only the Strong uh, got them to recover from their surgery when they had a heart attack or Only the Strong uh, inspired them to become a CEO or when they work, work out at the gym, they listen to only the strong. I never thought in my wildest dreams that, uh, so many years later that the album would have any kind of impact like that. And, uh, it gives me fond memories because, uh, we, we recorded a lot of the album, not only in New York, but in London, England. So it gives me a lot of memories. And of course, a lot of the great bands like Wasper over there and Twisted Sister, Exciter. Uh, it was the time of metal, yeah. you know, across the miles, Let the all over the world. Red. Let the blood yeah. run red, knock them down, thunder on the tundra. Comments yeah, believe out? it or not, uh, Let the Blood and Red hit the charts in uh, London, England. And uh, then it was overtaken by Roland Rat going to Hong Kong. That's how diversified. <laughs> uh, yeah, the charts were. That's back how then. diversified the the charts were over in England at the time, Chris, and still are probably. Do you remember? Yeah. Do you remember Thor? You know, blowing things up and lifting stuff, and do you remember anything? Yeah, I remember. Saw so him bend a microphone stand around his neck like a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. I'm, I'm glad to be. Huh. I'm glad to be known for some things. <laughs> I was wondering if the thing was, I was I was wondering if the thing was rubber. <laughs> yeah. No, that was the hot water bottle. They were rubber. I used to blow those up till they exploded. Oh yeah, it was, yeah. It was it was a calling card. But, but I loved your stage set. Like you had the most incredible stage set with the buzz saw, the big giant uh, buzz saw. Oh man, that was amazing. Right. It's just a bunch of yeah. It's just theatric stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, theatrics were really big uh, in in the metal field back then. With yeah. Twisted Sister, with you know Wrathchild, there was the makeup, the leathers right. and studs, and of course, you guys uh, really were over the top. And, and 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 you know what a cool story was, Chris? 
the Thor, yeah. maybe, okay, sorry, cut you off. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, do you remember Rath? Remember Rath Child? They would walk on the streets with the same clothes they'd go on stage with. I know uh, they would uh, uh, go into the bank and, and uh, put their deposit in. <laughs> they did have their stage. They, they wore their stage clothes off stage. Yeah, I know. They, cool. they, they lived a the life on and off. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't do that. I uh, had a secret identity. I tried to. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't wear my cape in public. <laughs> I would have probably been arrested wearing my stuff out. Yeah, I know. Your stuff was amazing. I remember uh, meeting you backstage. And one thing I remembered, man, this guy is super tall. He was, you, know, you hovered over me. You know, you, you were like a, you were like a true Viking. I had, normally stick six, but then I used to wear five inch heels on the shoes. Oh, yeah. Well, that was it. I was looking up at you the whole time we were talking. Yeah. I used to hate wearing those things, man. It's hard to walk around on it. You know, and if, the, if your foot's flat and you got a five inch heel, it feels like you're st standing on a brick, you know? So. <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, we got to, so yeah, way Thor. before there was Man of War, we had Thor. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, you know, it, and it was interesting to me that Thor told me this story. He goes that Chris, you met a guy, a cover band, a Thor cover band. I don't know. Maybe you want to tell Chris that. I don't know. I just heard a story that you you uh, met Iron Thor in Germany or something, and the guy you thought maybe he was the, uh, the guy you met, uh, which was me back in 19. No, he said he was your son. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay then. <laughs> He's you know. gonna... <laughs> you know? I have, I, you know, I have a few sons, or, you know, around the world, you know? Uh, and then, and then later on, I asked somebody and he said his son, he's the son of Thor. Oh, okay. Oh yes. Oh, okay. That's oh. right. Was, I yeah. thought he was. I thought he was your son at first. You know, I didn't right. know. I was just, you know, nobody tells me shit. You know, I'm just making. <laughs> do, you, do you have children? Me? Uh, children. I was just wondering if you have no, children. children. Children should not have children. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, I that's gotcha. why I don't have. Why I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I understand. Yes. Words to live by. <laughs> All right, what? that's it, guys. Uh, Thor, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so Thank much you for sharing much. a little bit. It was an honor. It was an honor, and uh, so nice to see you again, Are Chris. You leaving? Well, you could stick around yeah. if you want. It's all good if you want to give some. I uh... have to get back to the studio, and um, but I just want to say again, Chris. You know, good luck yeah. on the new upcoming documentary. I'm yes. anxious to see it. And it's on our uh, same label. We're label mates, Cleopatra Records. And, oh, yeah, okay. Um, it's going to be fantastic. The, what are you doing in the studio? Uh, we're doing a new album. Right, and uh, cool. possibly I could ask you about being a guest on the new album, uh, if yeah, you'd like you'd... to. I don't know if I... I'm asking you live on the air. Like <laughs> no, pressure. On no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> You have to ask my wife. She runs all that stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Okay. If well, I can I send an answer, send her an email? If I gave you an answer, she'd kill me. Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, I I had a wife like that too one time. She, you know, her name was Pantera. But uh, <laughs> but what I'm going to do is send her a message. Is that okay on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. She oh, looks okay. out. She looks out for us to make sure I don't do stupid things, which I do all my. I do all my life. All right. So anyways, the, the, the Cleopatra documentary is January 19th, 2021. That's a documentary for uh, Chris Holmes. Yeah. And uh, Thor, you got a new album coming out when? About? In 2021. All right. Uh, sometime in 2021. I don't have an exact date on it. I guess when we finish it, okay. uh, we'll get it delivered and it'll go out. And, do you have uh, a name for it yet? No, I'm, I'm thinking of a name. We're, we're, we we're could coming spitball up here. here. We could spitball right here. There, call, right there, called no. It's kind of, uh, it's if, you, no. If, you, if you came in, I would call it the ultimate alliance. Ooh, yeah. the ultimate yeah. alliance. I like that. Yeah, that sounds right. pretty good, right? Yeah, I shouldn't have yeah. told that one. Now <laughs> somebody else somebody will try that. to do. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> hey, nothing, great talking. Nothing like to you putting guys. together an album live. Yes. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Thor. Good luck on the new album. See you, man. Thank you. See you later, Thor. See you, man. Okay. All right. There we go. Number 10. Let's go to number nine. Now, look, this, Chris, I'd like to get Chris's opinion because when this guy came out, Momstein's Rising Force, we went from Eddie Van Halen style guitar to. Like, did he have any influence on your playing, Chris? Malmsteen, no, uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't play like that if I practiced, um, <laughs> y- you know, 23 hours a day for 20 years. I would never be able to play like that guy. He's he's just he's phenomenal, man. He's I, I'll say that. And uh, one thing I will say, I saw him playing Steeler, uh, 80, right. yes. about 82, 83. Ron Steele, and he was a radical good entertainer. I will say that. I mean, as playing the guitar, twiddling it around, doing the, <clears throat> like Randy Hansen, <clears throat> you know, he was re. I mean, and it even when we played with him in, in 97, uh, in Palo Alto, they opened up for us. I, you know, I went out there and looked and he was a lot, he was a lot heavier, right? Yeah. But the guy still entertained great. <laughs> yeah, you know? I saw, I saw Phenomenal him. guitar yeah. player. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, if if I, you know, I listened to it yesterday. It's um, the guitar works good, but you get to, to me, to me, I get it gets kind of tiring after a while. To me too. Uh, well, we're yep. kind of breaking up there a bit. And boo, you know, the same tempo. Yeah, that's but he's phenomenal, true. man. Trilogy, the following two albums really changed the pace a little bit. There's a lot more texture, a lot more variation. But this was his really first, well, his sophomore album, but it was really the full one with vocals. You got Jeff Scott Soto, so Sons of Apollo yeah. fame, amongst Wet. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was his album. And you can see how young he was there and what he's doing now. And But it, it was a good, you know, really, really was something new, something that changed the, the way people were playing changer. guitar, right? Yeah, it was a game we changer. We did Alcatraz. Yes, he Alcatraz. played in Alcatraz and Steeler, right? And Steeler before that. That's right. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you but know, he was yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, listen, I listen to it, and it's just the guitar works phenomenal, man. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, I'm not a big Ingvy Malmsteen fan, but I respect him that he changed it. He changed the game for guitarists. You know, he just brought something he, else. He's a great. He's a good, good entertainer on stage as playing lead guitar. He's, he's. I mean, as as being able, watching somebody play and entertaining, he's good at that too. Yeah, I agree. When I saw him yeah. play, I couldn't believe how fast he was playing and fast he was moving. He was moving so fast and he was playing so fast, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, good entertainer. Yeah, I All think right. he. I think he's stolen a lot of his 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 um. Uh, <laughs> stage persona from a guy named Richie Blackmore. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying stole. It's maybe it just influenced him, yeah. let's say, yeah. you know. I agree. I'm not saying he stole. It's wrong for me to say steal. He just influenced him a big time. I mean, He's borrowed. If, if, Blackmore if, wasn't doing it, so he took it. He just borrowed it for a while. Black, plus, Blackmore was using the neoclassical style, too. I mean, he had a little it, bit of that there, too, right? Yeah, but if there's a guitar player that says he's not influenced by Blackmore, he ain't a guitar player. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There you go. True. Okay. There that's you true. go. Because Black Blackmore's like he was he's like originator at, at you know he was doing that stuff in set in what sixty eight? Oh wow, yeah. Sixty seven. Oh, wow, he yeah. started, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So but anyway, that's Malmsteen was you know, play the same kind of guitar, do the same stance on stage, of course, you know. We brought you here, Chris, for a colorful perspective and commentary, and you're doing a great job. I love it. It's good. I love that. I love it. All right, here we go. Number eight. Number, you ready for this? Number eight. Number eight. Okay. Pull that out, Alan. There you go. Docking. Docking. Under lock, Under and, lock key. and key. The hairspray is almost as important as the music. Not quite. Yeah, look at those outfits. I, but, I, I hate to say this. Um, I've I have I have personal issues with Don that go way back to the eighties, eighty four. But I I sh- I've let him go, um, and uh, he you know, I, out of all the albums, out of all ten albums, that one smokes them all. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. That album, it, it, the production on that album is is the best out of all ten that we're going to listen to. The guitar tone. 
EQ playing is to me, to me is the best. Maybe it's because um, it, I listened to it and it said that it was remastered. Oh, okay. But still, sure. but still, but still, right. I'm but, sure a good album's a good album, even if it's remastered. Right. But I went back when I was, when I tur turned off the, 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 the window of what I was listening to, I just said remastered 2014 all the other ones weren't remastered okay so it could okay. have been that i don't know but but I, I i will say the production the the engineering and and just everything on the album was good the, Michael. i i love the sound of the guitar but you know don's voice is a little whiny <laughs> that's, that's to say the least a, yeah <laughs> a little whiny you know it's 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 not it's not it's, it's not in your face heavy grinding you know he's a super heavy guitar and then all of a sudden this whiny voice but that's the Don but that's the charm but maybe that's the charm you have the the great guitar work of george lynch and then you have the soft voice of don and just that's what Dawkin it, is have you yeah. ever did you ever meet by did, michael wagner from oh, double yes. trouble yeah and yeah. i mean yeah, you know, I met wagner i met him have, have you met george lynch sure man say hey, i'm from la right yeah 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 <laughs> I go George. George, I go. I go back with him back probably a '75. Mm -hmm. He had a band called Orange and, and called the Boys. Oh. You know, I played a show in L.A. probably uh, seven years or eight years ago. I played the Nam show with him right after he did, and played uh, the big balls with him. He played right before me. George's a good guy. Cool, cool. phenomenal player, man. I mean, at this time, the time this album was released, everybody was talking about George Lynch as a guitar player. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the holy trilogies coming out of L.A. with uh, Van Halen and Randy Rhodes. And, and the great songs on this. I mean, In My Dreams, Unchained Tonight, It's Not Love, Don't Lie to Me, Will the Sun Rise? There's a nice one, too. Yeah. So a very oh. strong album overall. But And I think there was a little, the cracks were starting to show. Right? The guys were kind of. You know, Mick Brown and Jeff Pilson and George Lynch were kind of really writing a lot of music, and Don was kind of separated from that. He, he I don't know if it was lead singer disease or what, but uh, it, it could be, uh, um, it could be an uh, an ego thing. Could yeah. be, That's you know, the, some, the cracks are starting to show a little bit. Some people don't like egos, you yeah. know. Um, Jeff I'm not Pilsen's, gonna say what. Jeff Pilson's a super nice guy. Me and Alan, uh, we met him. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Jeff's amazing. Jeff. Um, I and, did. I did meet John, I, I did meet Don Dawkin, and I mean, of course, I don't have as much history as you do, Chris, with him. But when I did meet him, and we did talk for a while, yeah, he was pretty nice. He was a nice fella. He was yeah, a nice yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, very He's always been nice to me. Always been nice to me. I just heard some shit through a door that he didn't know I was standing on the other side, <laughs> <laughs> and it was in a recording studio, and it kind of pissed me off. But I understand why. You know, it was, it was who was getting the time there, and he said Wa sucked. And uh, you know, wasp to to the, to them guys that write, you know, their music's a lot more technical than the wasp stuff. You know, wasp is about rock, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and that's it. <laughs> and on, I think it was kind of technical too. I think there's a bit of technical in there too in wasp. Were it wasp? Yeah, I think there was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Songs yeah, yeah, from yeah. the nether regions, you know what I mean? They they were ball crusher, you know, yeah, bone crusher. It. We'll get into yeah, that. We'll yeah. get into that. But the guitar is way in the back. At least that Dawkin album, the guitar is up front, right in your face. You know the the the, oh. the, the mixes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's a good. It, it's it was out of all ten, I think that's probably one of the best guitar sounds. Okay. I like back, I like back for the attack too. I think that one uh, George really uh, shone, shone on that one as well. So yeah. I like his solo stuff better. Okay. Oh, okay. I like Lynch Mob. All right. Yeah. All right, let's do number seven, That's Alan. Me. That's number me. Seven. seven. We're going Canadian here. We're going. I'm not sure if you ever met these guys. Exciter, Long no, Live the Loud. That's a three piece, right? That's yep. the three piece. That... And the drummer sings. Hey, and the drummer it... sings, right? Exactly. Drummer sings. Exactly. How would I know that? Beeler, Dan Beeler. You met, yeah. you, you ever, they opened for you or? <laughs> no, I watched it on YouTube, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, the greatest album cool. cover ever. He says with his uh, tongue firmly planted in his cheek. So yeah, that's uh, a cool cover. Yeah, yeah, very cool. <laughs> but you know, people talk about Brian Johnson always singing at the top of his range. They should really check out this album because Dan Mueller is relentless and is singing. And he's always... playing drums. Ah! Oh yeah, it's, it's, what a bitch playing. Like remember Blue Oyster Colt? That guy would sing lead, and it's hard for, to, to play drums and sing. I tell you that. Yeah. Did you like? But I remember excited? getting like this album. album? Okay, go ahead. You know, it was my favorite out of the early albums, uh, especially songs like "Born to Die," and uh, you know, "Long Live the Loud," of course, "Victims of Sacrifice." So I, I thought it was they they tried something different on it. Let me see. Look at see what I got. Look at that! Oh my! There you go. Well, that's notes of what I, of what I what I wrote down when I saw. Let me see what it says with Exciter. All Let's right. go. I got, I gotta find him. Uh, Fate's warning. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Exciter. They gotta be on here. <laughs> oh, right here. Okay, long live loud. I wrote the guitar work is just, is to me is, is there more speed metal? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. A lot more speed metal, you know. And the guitar works is <clears throat> is um is okay. It says generic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, compared to docking and stuff, man. Yeah, and mount team, you know. But it's good. It's it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yep. You know, I was just shocked to see that that the drummer sang. Yeah, right? yeah. And they're just, my God, how how easy on the road is that? It's a three piece. It's just one extra. It's one more jerk you don't have to deal with. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, that's, that's a good way to put it. Oh, hey, let me tell you something. Three versus four. <laughs> Could you imagine five people? Yeah, yeah. All the, the egos. <laughs> I got I to say, for us, Exciter, you know, they're a local band, at yeah. least kind of local to us. So we grew up with them. And they were there right before Metallica really broke. So, you know, there's a lot of that speed and thrash, you know, that was kind of, I yeah. wouldn't say started by them, but, you know, they were there. They were in the, they they were were there at there. the beginning with they everybody the else. So. With Metallica yeah. and, uh, you know, Anvil and everybody else. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Motorhead in a way. Yes. Yes. That's very true. You know? That's very true. Yep. And you know, when I, when I, when I first saw Dan Beeler playing, like, sing, like, he's power singing, too. He's not just singing, you know, anything, right? He's got a powerful yeah. voice, and uh, I, I don't. I was just like shocked. I was just kind of shocked when I was a young kid. All right, Alan. Anything else? No, that's All it. Right. Exciter, my my favorite of the catalogs. So. Number six. Do you have a copy of number six, Alan? Yeah, this is my is. first introduction. Really, look at that beautiful album. Look at that. What is she? Is she eating, is she eating soap no or excuse. an apple? What is she eating? Soap or an apple? I thought it was soap when I first saw it. Yeah, I didn't know it's an apple, but it looks. I like love soap. that back cover. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Kind of erotic. Yeah. But, I mean, for, for Saxon now, you know, they're trying to get that North American market, and uh, they weren't as bad as some of their later albums, but you can see the commercial aspects start creeping in here. They're not, We're not talking about denim and leather anymore, so. But a good <laughs> was commercials, but stuff like Broken Heroes that they just, you know, they even played on their last tour, so it's nice to see some of those old songs coming back. Yeah. How long was their last tour? That was what we see them about a couple of years ago, I guess. The time yeah. flies so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Two years now since the COVID. We lost yeah. a year. They so came yeah. with UFO. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. Did you ever play with Saxon? I, I, what? Did you ever play with Saxon? Yeah, yeah. They did a tour with Wasp and the Headless Children. Oh, okay. Saxon okay. and Accept. Both of them in the, on the East Coast. And then I went and saw Saxon in 82 at the Waldorf in Frisco. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, Biff's a cool guy, man. I like him. He's always been nice to me. Yeah, you know? he's a very cool guy. Nigel, the still, drummer? Do they still have the original members? Uh, Nigel, the drummer, who uh, replaced, uh, replaced uh, uh, the original drummer, he's been there ever since. Let's mm -hmm. just say that the, the, the lineup that they have now has been there for at least 20 years, I would yeah. think. Yeah, Alan. Paul Quinn. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I saw him at the Waldorf. The guitar player had a, had his guitar strap. The guitar went to one pivot, 
and he could spin it in circles. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> that thing. Yeah. It's kind of cool. He'd play a chord and spin it around and spin, you know? Way before ZZ Top did their video. Oh, yeah, yeah. ZZ Top, yeah, yeah. Remember they had a video of the guitars doing that? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Saxon yeah. started it then, is what uh, mm-hmm. you're saying. Okay. The original bassist, uh, Steve Dawson, that was his last album. So, uh, you know, that was a, a transition, I guess. But yeah, I like that album too. It's a great album, Saxon. Innocence is no excuse. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but innocence is an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it's you've a, ever pleaded, innocence. It, it's a total excuse, man. <laughs> Judge, I was innocent. <laughs> <laughs> innocence. <laughs> Number five. Hey, Jim, I didn't realize this, but hey, we got another Canadian band here. Kick Axe, welcome yeah. to the club. They're sophomore, they're, they're second album. And again, I mean, this guy can sing George Christen. What a beautiful voice. And he's got a lot of good songs on here. Uh, you know, Never Let Go. And they even do a little, uh, with a little help from my friends, with some uh, Rick Emmett from Triumphs on there. I think Lee Aaron's on that track as well. So, Another Canadian connection here on the top 10, 1985. But there's a connection with Wasp. Oh, I didn't know If you remember, Chris, they actually, was it back vocals that they did on? Which song was it? Uh, The Last Command, it was on uh, Running Wild in the Streets. Kick Mm Axe. I I don't know to what degree they did the back vocals, but it was a Pasha record. It was Spencer Prophet. Proffer, who actually did that album, right, Alan? Yeah, right. They did that album, yeah. So there must have been the it. same time you guys were in the same. I mean, this, the album wasn't as big as we we would have liked it to be, but right. Well, what happens at Pasha? There's like at the time there was three re- recording rooms. It wasn't just one studio. It was three studios. And yeah. if the one band wanted backup vocals, they'd go in and get the people from in that day <laughs> from the other groups that were in there. You know, so we're just know, walking around all day. <laughs> they, they just pop in and go, "Hey, we need some vo- vocals over here. Can you come over and sing?" Cool, cool. We, we had a Mexican guy work at the grill next door. <laughs> at the grill, come in and do at Blind in Texas to try to do, "Hey, dude, let's party." I thought that was you. <laughs> I, I was the last one. Oh, okay. I was the last one that tried it, and it worked. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know. I mean, I, everybody tried it. Ran, Randy, everybody, Riley, Blackie, even even some of the engineers, and it didn't work. And then uh, they even had the, the Mexican guy in the taco stand next door come over. He didn't work. And finally, you know, they were like, let's give Chris a try. And also the Quiet Riot guys, they also yeah. appeared on the album too because just everybody knows that. It was Kick Axe and the Quiet Riot mm-hmm. guys, Carlos and Chuck Wright, I think. Could be wrong. They, they kind of did a little bit of guest vocals on there. And Joe, it's Kevin. Oh, it's Kevin. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Kevin was in there. All right. Yeah. Alan, anything else on this album? No, it's just, uh, you know, it, uh, they really came into their own on this album. Unfortunately, they only released three in the, in, throughout the 80s. They released a fourth album much, much, much later. Yeah. Uh, but it, I think it's a quality, and it's, it sounds great. It's a good sounding album, I found. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Here's here's one of my all time favorite bands. You ready for this, Alan? This is number four, Roudness. Oh, Loudness. Oh, I love these guys. Japan's answer to Eddie Van Halen, Akira Takasaki. <laughs> you know, but again, this illusion being one of my favorite albums of all times. This for me was a bit of a letdown because they had to go into the North American market with the MZA, but it was a big hit at the time, and the rest of the album is very very solid. What, first... what do you think of the guitar playing, Chris? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's good. The guy's good, you know. It's it's um, it's in this field, heavy metal field. It's it's uh, Asian people sometimes just kind of don't fit in in a way, you know. It's um, but yeah, yeah. I love the guy's a good player. Then he plays the same kind of guitar I play. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, Kira Takasaki. Uh, I. It's the first English album. It was their first English album. So they had a little bit of difficulty in the translation, but they worked it out. Great bunch of guys. Well, yeah, you can you can tell by the uh, the accents, you know. Yeah. There's a, a lot of Japanese people can't say L's and uh, W's. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like the album. It's cool. It's, 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 got, it's got some drive and stuff on it. Yeah, me too. Probably one of my uh, all-time favorite albums. I love Loudness. 
And yes, I agree, Alan. The last one, Disillusion, was a great album, but I don't know. I think this album is just a notch better. And on YouTube, they played in 2014 on the boat, on the love boat. Oh, yes, oh, the love okay. boat. The love, the love boat. boat. Not the love boat, but the, you know, rock and the but, monster yeah. cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. You, you ever do one of those, Chris? No. Looks like fun. I, I haven't met one person that says it's not a blast. Uh, everybody spoke to when we interviewed some of the groups and some of the people that are fans that went on the same cruise. They yeah. say it's you got it's a it's a must. It's a must. It's a bucket list. The one, yeah, I would love to, but the one that we were going to play, they don't pay. They didn't pay enough for us to to do the flights and there and play it and make and oh. break even. Well, that's yeah. the so it's not the worth purpose. it. I, you know, I'd go there and play for nothing, but it wasn't worth the. Uh, we had to pay for our flights and stuff. We didn't have enough money to make it. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? yeah. My good buddy died on one of those rock cruises. Really? Jimmy, Jimmy Bain. Bain. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. And especially with COVID now, no one's looking at the boats anymore, you know, was, uh, especially since, you know, hmm. those people were stuck on the boat for like a month. Yeah. That'd be a drag. That'd be a drag. That'd be yeah. definitely... All right, so there was a change in plans on number three, Alan. So Chris probably doesn't know this album, and neither do I that well. Well, so this what is, is Fate's Warning, The Spectre Within. Yeah, I listened to it. Also? No, because, Alan, you, you you gave us not The Spectre Within, the one uh, the one after. Awake right? in the Guardian Awake it was an 86 Gar- release. Oh, this is right. an 85 release? So Alan okay, changed it the- all up last second. That's a different one. I got a, I got Awakening the Garden. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. Uh, my mistake. Yeah, Alan, Alan screwed it all up, Chris. Again, what? this is their second album. It's the same vein as uh, "Awaken the Guardian," but this is just the one that precedes it. Look at a beautiful cover. And yeah. again, people are introduced to John Arch's vocals, his vocal stylings, because he has a very, very distinct voice, and the oh, way yeah. he phrases the lyrics. Now, uh, what's on the other album? What's that album cover? That tripped me out. Yeah, <laughs> what, what, that's a cool album. I like that album cover. But where's the other one? Like, Alan, do you have the other one? Epitaph. Alan, do you have the oh, other no, one? They're two beautiful album covers. Yeah, sure. What's the other? The other ones that what? I couldn't figure out what that was on the cover. <clears throat> oh, I threw him off, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he changed that. <laughs> All right, what's what is it, Alan? Did well, you find it? First of all, and anything's an improvement over this one. That's the well, first that's not the one. one. No, this is the one Chris was talking about. Spectre. Yeah, what is that? Is that an eye or what? It's like a bridge. Right. Here's, a, here's the guardian, I guess, is here that you got kind of some kind of a, it's like a black hole or a, an, that, another the, universe you're walking. Yeah, that people could something? travel through. Awaken okay. the Guardian. That's a that's an '86 release. Yeah. All right, I was tripping on that album cover, so that's the one I listened to. <laughs> but Fate's Warning. I mean, they got their own style happening now. It's still a little bit of made an influence you can hear, but I mean, uh, for me, K- Kiri Ellison, uh, Orphan, uh, Without a Trace, and uh, what many consider Fate's Warning's best song ever, Epitaph, is on uh, is on this one. So yeah. So it was kind of like a dream theater, right? They were the the precursor to dream theater. Yeah, yeah, great drums. Yeah. It's they're they're progress. To me, it's more the 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 record that I heard. Whatever, it's real progressive rock. It's more progressive. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's got, true. got a lot of changes in it and stuff. What, what do you think of his voice, Chris? I like it. I yep. like it. It was There's good. A lot of people struggled with that version of Fate's Warning, so. All right. I you know. It, if every album's a little different than the previous one. They're, it would work out good on there. Right. You know? Right. Their, their first album narrowly missed our 1984 list, so I'm glad this uh, the second album made the 90, 1985 list. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of second albums... Here we go, Chris. This is one for you. At number two... Ta-da! We here have... We are. Whoa! The Last oh, Command. Last command. Yeah. yeah, it's it. There we go. Flip it around. Here's the gang right there. Look at that. Jeez. Chris. That's the second album. That's the second album. The Last Command. The Last Command. Yeah. That's right. What do you yeah, remember but the about backs, this album? The back's different. Which one were you holding up? I'm holding up the remastered. See that? 
Because oh. some bonus tracks. There's some bonus tracks like Mississippi Queen and uh Boner, Savage. those are bonus tracks. That's not the same players though, Mississippi Queen. That's not fair. That's Johnny Rodden and Frankie Benelli. Oh wow, I didn't know. There I thought you know. Let's see. That, that was all recorded during the Headless Children. And they just threw it on that one. You got credit that's, for Savage? That, that's to make money. You got credit for Savage as a bonus track? I see your name there. Me? Yep, Savage, On Your Knees, Hellion, Sleeping in the Fire, Animal. Those are live versions. Off and I Want to Be Somebody Live, yes. Yeah, my name should be on Wild Child, is it? Yep, it's on Wild Child. Oh my God. And Ball Crusher, too. Ball Crusher. I think that's probably my favorite uh, song in the album. You know, if you look at the re reissued albums, my name's taken off all the credits. Really? No, reissued. Wow. I, I saw one in Finland. A reissued one. They took my names off all the credits. Well, on this version here, it's a Canadian version, so uh, your name. Yeah, is yeah. Well, that's that was probably issued about third twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all right. It's the way it is. So I so love, blind, I, I love signing that album. Yeah, yeah. Blind in Texas. So uh, <clears throat> it's it's actually you. You're the one who made it on the uh, Let's Party. Is that what you say? What what is it again? Hey, let's party. Hey, let's, let's, party. party dude. let's party, dudes. Let's party, dudes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know, fistful of diamonds, widowmaker, blinded Texas, ball crusher, wild child, of course. The is guitar. It... You know what the problem is with that album? The guitars aren't loud enough. They're way in the back of the mix. I, I, when I listen to it compared to Dawkin and a lot of the other bands, the guitar is way in the back of the mix. It's all Blackie's vocal vocals. His are way up front through the whole song. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the problem is because he sings over the whole song from the beginning to the end. Uh, look at the videos. Ever seen the Wild Child video? Yep. Yeah. He comes in on a motorcycle and dancing. Did, did you notice there's no lead guitar in it? Yeah. They edited it out. Yeah. That was a single yeah. version, right? Yeah. But, be, yeah. 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 Because it's why have somebody get any recognition on it? Because it's not. Yeah. But anyway, that's out of all the ten albums. That's the, to me, that's the worst sounding one. Okay. Hey, is it true, Chris, that he that you were going to give that song to uh, Motley Crue, Wild Child, but uh, Vince couldn't sing it, so you decided to record it yourselves? It, that could have been something with between Blackie and uh, and them. You know, if I if if it was, I wasn't in on her to, in on anything. Okay. No, I remember rehearsing the song Wild Child before. No, no, no! It was written right before we recorded it. Okay. Did and you did you come clip. up with the opening riff? Sorry. Okay, go on. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's a great no. opening riff. Huh? I love that opening riff. Well, it's only two notes, really. Yeah. Really, it, well, it's three notes. Down on, down on, down on, down. But it, it's just whatever. It just sets the tone for the rest of the song, for sure. Yeah, I list I, when I listen to that. Uh, just today, I, I listened to a little bit of every song, and it's way too slow. Okay. <laughs> Compared to, because I've played, you know, I I haven't heard it for probably 30 years, the record, and mm -hmm. I'm used to playing it live. Okay. You know, which, you play it always a little faster. Down on it, but anyway, yeah. What about that but middle part? Think, okay, go. Things for the what? band uh, were really picking up by then, Chris. Were you happy with the progression after the first album, and then, then when this one came out, uh, this, the guitars were so buried, and I can't. You know what am I supposed to do? They're not going to listen to me in the mix. They just throw me out of the room. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's uh, no, it's that's, you know, after um, Born Again just came out, right? Mm -hmm. Albums like that, right? And stuff. So I wasn't. I wasn't really. Uh, I I wouldn't say I'm, I was thrilled about it. You know, I did. I didn't really care about it because it was at that point. It wasn't the band. It wasn't a band. Look who's on the cover. So, yeah. so it was me, 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 and it's it's all Blackie's voice. So it's I didn't like it. I could have cared less about it. So I as early that. as. As early as the second album, you're 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 saying that the 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 machinations were happening to to become more of a solo act that was sidemen than a, than a true band like it was set up to be. Yeah, that's what Blackie always wanted to be, solo guy. Yeah. You know, 
It's the way it is. You know what do you do? You can't change it. You know. What were the good memories of recording that album? Were there any good memories? Oh man, that was a really cool idea I came up with, or something happened in the studio that you said, "Wow, that really stands out." When I farted in Fence Spencer's face. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, we heard about that. One. Yeah, <laughs> that's that was the best. That was the best. <laughs> that was the highlight of the recording. <laughs> I'll never forget that, man. <laughs> Did you put him down? Did you put him down? Put him down? What do you mean? You brought him down when you farted. <laughs> Did oh, you... he he, 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 <clears throat> he was leaning back in a chair on the phone and talking on the phone. I'm waiting to do my solo. Man. I'm tired of it, you know? And, and uh, so I dropped my pick. Then I had gas and I bent down. <laughs> and he's leaning back in this chair and I bent down my ass with two, an inch from his face. And I just ripped the gnarliest fart in his face, and he got yeah. pissed. He got pissed and walked out of the room. Was gone for about three hours. <laughs> I'll screw Chris. I'm gonna bring the guitars down in the mix. <laughs> oh, maybe that was no, the that's demise. Probably why. That's, that's probably, probably why. why. Right. No, no, no. It's because of what it's. You know, you got. You can't have everything loud, right? You can't have everything up in the mix. So they want. Of course, they want the vocals. You know. And Blackie's voice, he's got a unique voice, so that should be, you know, the only thing heard, you know. How, I, 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 how did Randy get along with the with, with Blackie? Did he get along with him or any butting heads or? They were always butt, butting heads. Yeah. Always, yeah. Always. What about Steve Black Riley? There's a first album with Steve Riley. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was... Um, Riley, he's just, you know he was a part of the, actually a member you know um, Riley's just Riley he's he doesn't he's not really he's always in the background okay. you know now he's he was cool. cool all right good 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 yeah anything else he, he, he played good drums on there yeah absolutely you know? I like the album a lot I mean that's why we put yeah. it number two me and Alan we love it you I, know uh, I just don't because it it's not to me it's not heavy metal in your face. Yeah, the, right. the, the guitar is not in your face. It's not. It's not ripping in the music, and it's that's what heavy metal music is. It's guitar. I guess you there's know? a different perspective. Like me and Alan, the fans, and yeah. you, the creator, right? You're always the creator is always going to say, "I could have fixed this and I could have fixed that," but we're kind of appreciating it for what it is, right? Well, you go go listen when you, when the band plays live. The guitar's in your face. It's loud. Yeah. Yeah. And then when it's on the album, when I listened to it today, I listened to Wild Child, and it was just, it's just a puny little dean and dean. It's not like Dawkin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's just a songwriting and stuff. It's all right. Hey, you can only mix the album one way, you know, when it's done, after yeah. it's mastered. So that's that's the way they wanted to master it. I would have I would have done it differently, but that's me. All right. All right, everybody ready for this? Now? All right, number one. Here we go. Let's build this up. 1985. Get my album here. Hold here on. we go. Right. It's, it's, it's got to be striped. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Soldiers under oh. command. There it is. There yeah. It is. Another sophomore album, right? This is their second album as well. So uh... yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this this album, believe it or not, sold 500,000 copies. Went gold. One of the first Christian artists to actually achieve. Such an accolade, I wish, shall we say. Look at that. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if the Pope bought one. <laughs> yeah, well, he did. He probably did. <laughs> Look at that. You have what is Christianity, that but you have that's some sort of the machine van. gun that's stuff. That's a striper van. That's a striper van. Look at that. That's that's cool. The road war is that's the road warrior. Probably. Yeah, have, yeah. yeah. They all but got you, guns you, too. Did you know them as Rocks with Jim, or do you know them as Striper, Chris? I no, no, I've never really met the guys that much. I, I will say, uh, I went to the Felt Forum, um, probably '86 uh, in New York, and they were playing, and I had a pass and everything. And before they were done playing, we went into the hospitality room. Me and my friend, my friend was a bartender, right? We, and I had, a, I had a backstage pass go wherever I wanted. And we get into the hospitality room, and this is before they're off stage. And they had the, you know, they had stuff set up like black and yellow M&Ms in a big bowl. And, stuff. <laughs> and my, they had a, they had a big bar there. And my buddy went, let's get a beer. And the beer didn't work. So they weren't serving any beer, you know, at their, after because they're religious. Oh. But 
my buddy's a bartender. We got we opened up underneath the, the thing and tapped the beers and put the you know CO two bottles on it. We had the bars. We had we poured about twenty beers and left them on the counter and split. <laughs> you know, so there there was alcohol there. Yeah, I guess it wasn't supposed to be. You know, Michael Sweet's a nice guy. I gotta say though, we've known Michael Sweet for a very long time, and he's a super nice guy. He's got a great voice. Some people like yeah. that type of voice. Yeah. Other people don't, right? I mean, it's a, you know. He's got a killer voice, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah back in the day, I mean, this is something new, right? A band singing about uh, Jesus. and uh, But for me, it's always been about the music and the, the, the quality of the musicianship, the writing. Yeah. And they had it all. They had it all. So the, the subject matter didn't bother me whatsoever. Reading Michael Sweet's books, as many people hated them because they sang about Jesus, and a lot of Christians hated them because they were a heavy metal band singing about Jesus. So they couldn't win no matter what they did. Yeah. Jesus has been around for 2,000 years, you know. Yeah. 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 But I just, it's, I just, it's, I, they have a lyric, a few lyrics in their, in their songs that were in, in, the, in the Mormon book, the hymn book, mm -hmm. you know, that they sing the lyrics. You know, I think they have a song that's saying "Onward, Christian Soldiers." Oh yeah, yeah, the last song, yeah, the Heim of, of the, the Republic. Republic. Yeah, "Onward, Christian Soldiers," marching off to war. It's all right. It's their bag, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. And what? then you know, interviewing Michael Sweet in the past, it's, I think it's my favorite of the catalog, and he he's on the record of saying it's it's probably his as well because it's it was raunchy, it was new, it was a full album, uh, rocked hard, and didn't get as as polished as some of the later albums. So. Yeah. Didn't he go sing for Boston? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. You can see he's got that voice. He's got that Boston-ish voice, right? You know that. Uh, yeah. The only guy. The only guy I ever met was Oz Fox, the guitar player. Yep. Yeah. Right. Who Who unfortunately was in the hospital recently. There. I, I, I hope he's doing better. So. Yeah, What's wrong a, with him? He's got a brain tumor. Unfortunately. Oh, are you serious? Yep. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, and he's uh, yeah, he's getting some treatment now, and uh, you know, the striper's still kicking it. Twenty twenty, they just released their new album, actually, not too long ago. We and, uh, reviewed and Tim had Gaines, Michael on. Tim Gaines is playing for Aldo Nova, Alan. Well, <laughs> Tim there <Gaines>. you go. <laughs> Tim Gaines so all these Aldo years Nova, later, they're go. still they're still together and recording, and in one fashion or another. So Michael Sweet's got solo albums released all the time. So yeah, all right, so. Everybody, what I'm gonna ask this question out to everybody. They'll text. What albums did we miss in 1985? Maybe well, Chris, Jim, if I could, if I could just out. add to that, yeah. you know, there were some disappointments in that year too, right? I mean, okay, Raven had a great album with Break what the Chains. Yeah. What about Helix? Yeah, about Helix. Helix, Long Way to Heaven. You know, that was a uh, for me. It was a little too commercial to make the list. It was uh, after had their big success of uh, Walking the Razor's Edge. It was a at the time, and that's what we try to do with these lists. How we see these albums now, but what how we felt at the time, and for me that was a little bit of a letdown. There's some great cuts off of the Long Way to Heaven, like Deep Cuts the Knife, but a little too commercial for me. So you remember one band you miss is remember Warrior, yeah, USA Warrior, Fighting for the, Earth. Fighting for the Earth. Earth, yeah. It almost yeah. made the list, Chris. It almost Did you ever made see them the play? list. Did you ever see them play? Me? Where would we be? How does that start yeah. off, Alan? Where would we be? <laughs> Warrior Joe, Joe Floyd plays guitar for them, right? Right. And he, he he's in he's in L.A. He engineers a lot of albums. He engineered uh, Resurrection by oh, Rob okay. Halford. With he Halford, did that. Wow. And that that album's probably got the the one of the most heavy metal sounds I've ever heard. Resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. What he sings about kind of turns me off. Right. You know, it's about um, it's about all West Hollywood antics, whatever. But the man, the guitar work is just monster. Roy Z played guitar on it. Right, right. Yes, yes, Joe yes. Floyd and Warrior. He he's a, he was he he uh, he he's a he helped me it, he helped me with some of my guitar sound back in '82. Okay, yeah, yeah. that who, that who, almost who, made the who, list. Who's it the was singer, on Alan? Alan, who's who sings for uh, Warrior? Perry again? McCarty. Perry, oh, man. what a great voice! He played with Steve Stevens, in, yeah, uh, in that other band. I can't the remember. Comic the name Playboys. Of yes, yes, yes. Yeah, man, this guy's killer. got a killer voice. Killer. But you go, voice. you got Raven. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a letdown with Stay Hard. You got Rush, who pretty much gave up the guitar with Power Windows. There's all synthesizers. Album. 
Yeah. Even except after balls to the wall, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a commercial, you know, screaming for a love bite, you know. It's kind of, so, yeah. <laughs> well, but a lot again, of people want to so, accept. So, I see a lot of know, accept here. And Malice, Malice was another yeah, band. Yeah, Malice, Malice was, was killer, man. Malice was killer, man. kind of pre Queensrÿche, I guess, right? They had that sound. Halloween. Right. Invasion of your privacy. Day. That was a good follow up to Rat out, out of the Cellar, right? That was a huge album at the time. Invasion yeah. of your privacy, yeah, killer cover. Um, Neo yeah. Sacred Heart could have made the list, but again, looking back, yeah. you're like, hey, what's what's going on here? You know, there's and, and, and we, played, we played the Troubadour once with Rat opened and Warrior played after Wasp played in between. Wow, it was, wow, those it was are the days. Rat Wasp and, and Warrior. Those are the days. And uh, Armored Saint. And 1985, yeah. was that their first album, March of the Saints? I think it was. Well, I think it was 84. Out. Yeah, I thought that was 84. Oh, Delirious yeah. Nomad. Delirious Nomad, the one oh. right after. That was 1985. Uh, yeah. Wa- a Slayer, Hello Waits. That was in 1985. Yeah. And that's, these are the, the names that people are throwing out here. And yes, we already talked about The Last Command. A lot of people are saying, The Last Command, The Last Command. Oh, here's a big one. Megadeth, Killing is My Business, and Business is Good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they had an album called that. Killing yeah. is my business, and business is good. That was the the first, the debut album by Megadeth. Well, don't, don't you remember what's his name had a song called "Rockin' Is My Business" and "Business Is Good"? <laughs> no, I remember? No, no. Who was it? Sorry. Um, don't remember uh, that one. Has somebody from L.A. that had a band? I forget the name of them, um, but he was killed in a motorcycle accident a few years later. He had a song called "Rockin' Is My Business," and "Business Is Good." Yeah, well, I, I, I don't remember it, but it's cool. Uh, Exodus, yeah. "Bonded by Blood." That was a big one for them. That was a big yeah. one for them. Uh, and I'm looking at everybody and, else's comments here. And Power Slave. So you could you can see in '85, right? The thrash movement's coming in, and the other side of that is going a lot of more commercial. So it's starting to be a little split. The scene, right? Power Slave was '86, yeah. right, Alan? Or is that '84? I can't remember. We just did it with 84. 84, yeah, that was Power Slave. Yeah, yeah. It was just the live yeah. album, Live After Death by Iron Maiden. That, that was one 85. I was going to put because, but well, we've decided to stu- do more studio yeah, albums. Or the that, live that albums. Or the live classic. albums, you said. Or the live albums. Um, I like a lot. The Live at the Inferno Ra- Raven. Yeah. Uh, and we're 85. Also- 85, yeah, 85 live albums. Well, I have to check if that might be 84, but live after death for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's Triumph Stages. That was their uh, double double live uh, yeah. album came out at uh, this time as well. Man of War <coughs> Into the Glory Ride. Man of War Into the Glory Ride. It's a good album. I guess yeah. it was 1985. Four Horsemen, which I've never really listened to, but that, somebody's writing that, Four Horsemen. Oh, that's yeah. the guy. Hey, the Four Horsemen. That's, that's the guy right. rocking his, my business. Business is good. That's right. Yes, that's the Four it. Horsemen. That's what that's what uh, Lucha said. Scorpions. I saw them years later with Ron Young from Little Caesar singing for them. Yeah. Well, the, the singer got in an accident on a motorcycle. It's like the Almond Brothers, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Scorpions Worldwide Live. That was a another big, live album. That was a wow. very big yeah. album. Uh, Chris, somebody wants to ask if you saw Zoller X. Zoller X. No. 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 Uh, Kiss I Asylum. Had, I, yeah, I never had the chance to see too many bands because I was always out on the road playing. Yeah. And then when I get when I get home, I'd be a homeboy, you know, stay at home. I'd be glad to just sit at home. Yeah. And it's interesting because since you're on the road all the time, you didn't get a chance to really get into these albums back then, right? By the time you're, you're touring and you're playing, you're not really like me and Alan. We we're just, you know, buying the albums, listening to the music, but you were busy working, right? Yeah, yeah. You never have a chance to see magazines or whatever. You know, it depends on where you are in a truck stop, but you, you sleep all day and, you know, do a show at night. The only time you get to see albums is when you do in stores. Yeah. Okay. You know, right. you, do, you do a record in store and you sign autographs, and the guy, the owner of the store, will go, okay, guys, at the end, he'll go, you can go out and pick out 10 albums you want. It'd be great. I'd go pick out, did it, did I'd be sticking them in my pockets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris, uh, Ranger Ragnar says hi. Sabotage, you know, if you know who Chris Ragnar is, uh, Power of the Ragnar. Night. 
Ragnar, Ragnar. Is he in London? Ragnar, are you in London? I don't know, but Power of the Night yeah, by yeah. Sabotage. Yeah. Did King Diamond put out an album in 1985? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. You're but, our uh, and, King uh, Diamond specialist, Jim. Chris Maybe. Martin says, Chris is a great guest. Chris, a lot of love for you, Chris. A lot of love for you. <laughs> A lot, of, and I'm very. I'm, me and Alan are looking forward to uh, seeing your uh, documentary. That's yes, coming can't out wait. 2021. I feel like we're living the documentary, Alan, with Chris. <laughs> it'll be it'll be amusing, you know. It's, it's got a lot of my friends from from when I was a kid, right. you know. And they're talking. There you go. UFO yeah. misdemeanor. UFO misdemeanor. I'm just reading out the albums that people are like. Was Shanker in that? Well, I don't think so. Misdemeanor. Wrote- I don't know. I don't know. He, he had left. Be... Unless he no, I don't think so. He's in Bedford. Ragnar is in Bedford. I'm not sure what Bedford is. Is that UK Bedford or US? Your friend. It's gotta be England. Yeah. yeah, I know I got a good friend named Ragnar in England. Okay. Venom. I have just, I have zero friends named Ragnar. <laughs> Steve Grimmett. <laughs> Steve Grimmett. Alan, your friend in uh, England. Okay. Ragnar? No, no, no. Steve Grimmett. You have a friend in uh, England. No, I said no friends named Ragnar. Oh, okay, yes, yes, and that, that's about it. So that's it. Yeah, there we go. That's our top ten list. Thanks for Chris for giving us his insight from the LA scene. Yeah, it was and fun. Uh, taking time to to share the, his thoughts and uh, listening to the albums today. So yeah, yeah, and, and go pick up and and I and you're you're working on your new album. There's an Indigo Go. Yes. Right? Go, yep. uh, you know, help Chris out. You know, yeah, find the album. Brother. Go there, fun ten bucks on. That's good. Anything. Yeah, there's no yeah. touring, so he can't make those albums. He can't find the funds to make those albums because that's usually what you do in touring. You get the money from the tour, put back into the album, and create the music for the fans. So if you guys want some cool music by Chris Holmes and you want it to sound really good, you know, please feel usually, free to donate. Usually, you get your money from the record label. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the fans are the record. And then they label charge today. you back on the on the back end. They send you a bill yeah. on the back end, right? Thank you, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Fatal Portrait was 1986. Yes, it was 1986. All right, guys. Thank you so much. A lot of people are watching, and a lot of people had a good time watching this show. So, Chris, right. you're a great guest once again. Thank you, Chris. Check this out. Watch. Check out my eyes here. Okay. You want to see how you look from left to right? You go like this. Mm, oh, good. <laughs> 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 is that good or what? Yeah, it's yeah. good. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, you can. Let's go like look at you. Jeez. It's kind of freaky. It's kind of freaky. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks we'll again. I hope everybody enjoyed our show. 1985 and 1986 will be down the road. That's all. <laughs>